Ladies and gentlemen, welcome yourselves back to Twiz Gamers. It is your boy da -da 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 DJ Lord Z inside the place. Now we've just received the brand new trailer for Call of Duty World War 2 and I've watched the whole live stream, I've watched this trailer over and over and I've broken it down and analysed it fully and I'm going to be giving you all of the information including the extra bits and easter eggs that you could have missed. So make sure to chuck a like, subscribe if you're brand new and leave a comment down below. I'd love to get a discussion going of what you ladies and gentlemen think of this new trailer and the new Call of Duty game. So without further ado, let's get into this breakdown. So to start everything off, similar about World at War, we received our first opening scene at sea. Now, this could suggest that we're going to be getting sea battles as there were a lot of mechanics of ships going into each other, planes flying around and much more. So what this means in multiplayer and single player, we could be seeing armed vehicles once again since World at War, the first time and the last time that we saw vehicles that we could actually use. Now on the first scene, we we see our main character Private Red Daniels and the only reason we know this is him for sure is because of the next scene that's coming up and you can see he's holding a weapon of some sort in his hand and it looks like the M1 Grand Rifle which is confirmed to be in the game itself. So the next scene it cuts closer to his face and if you compare it to the actual actor who plays Private Red Daniels they look very similar. So on the next scene coming up where you actually see the battle at the sea, you see him using the MG42, also confirmed to be in the game, but it's mounted to the ship itself. Now this is very similar to what we saw in the campaign of World at War, and the reason I'm comparing it a lot is because they have a similar concept and it was the last time we saw a game which wasn't in the present or the future. Now this scene coming up here is important as you can see the explosions, you can see the brutalness of the ship going into another ship and this is going to be huge for another point I have later on. As the trailer goes on there is more hidden easter eggs and a lot more information we can take away from the little bit slowed down. Now this scene might not look like much but it tells us quite a lot. If you're familiar with the old Call of Duty games there was a lot of blood and a lot of limbs falling off from shooting in battles. Now they, they could be taking this approach again which would be fantastic if you're into the glore. It really gives that realism to the game itself but as we can see here their body parts do get ripped apart and there is lots of blood. Now this scene right here doesn't only just show a grenade on this guy's shirt, this character is one of the main characters out of the group which we'll talk about in a little bit, called Private Sessman. He's also holding a gun in his hand but it's very unclear to see which gun it actually is. Of course with this part we see the machine gun tearing down people on the beach and it's a mounted MG42, the same gun we saw on the boat. In this scene we see the soldier carrying the M1 Grand and he's running through the battlefield which has, no pun intended, but it has, but besides seeing the brutalness again of the blood on the floor, we actually see something important here. What you're seeing here is a box, potentially an ammo crate down there and what it could do is give you ammo or carried by other soldiers for health and we used to have those actually in the old Call of Duty. Now this is an important scene as you're seeing all of the planes fly past above the characters heads and bringing back to the point that I originally said, it looks like this is the first Call of Duty game in a very long time that we're actually going to be able to mount vehicles like we did previously. This is just a closer shot of the soldier but he has something on his bag, I can't quite make out what it is, I've turned up brightness, everything, so I'm not too sure. Now this is the first scene we see our character or the enemy character jump out of the uh, tank right there and he pulls out his pistol which is the 45 caliber green scope, I think I said that correct. And here you can see something on his waist and we get a close up of it now and I still can't make out particularly what it is. This is another important scene as we see the five main characters standing there on the field. Now of course there's going to be a fleet of soldiers all fighting together so there's more than five characters that we'll get to know. But these are the five main characters in the squad that we will get to love and know throughout the campaign. One of them being Private Red Daniels and the other one being Private Sesman. Here we have Private Red Daniels giving us a cheeky little wink telling us duty first 
first at one of the camps and again we keep seeing the reoccurring M1 Grand Rifle. Now this scene right here is incredibly interesting. You see a load of soldiers going out onto the battlefield in their tanks but then they get ambushed but the fact of the matter is we could be seeing tanks in multiplayer like we did at World at War. Now this is a fantastic feature if they do decide to add it. Nothing's confirmed at this moment in time but the fact that they have fully functioning weapons in the tanks and the third person control backs up my point that I said earlier that we could be seeing actual vehicles we can mount in the World War multiplayer. Now that would be fantastic if they do but the fact that it's fully functioning and it works I wouldn't be surprised if they do end up adding it into the multiplayer. Now once again to do with vehicles we see the plane flying at us going at a rapid pace shooting bullets but the most important part is seeing an actual machine to be able to shoot it down. Now this is the first person perspective so it's how we're actually going to see it through the sight in the game but the fact that they've had to add this we could be seeing it in the multiplayer also and also backs up my point on the fact we could be driving vehicles during multiplayer. Now there isn't really much information besides seeing this new New character and the sign on their badge but there's planes crashing so planes and vehicles have a huge part in this game as well as close combat in a tower but another thing to note which I have another point on further into the game is that in multiplayer you might be able to shoot down actual buildings like you can in battlefield now this is a fully functioning possibility which we could be seeing as there's another scene with the exact sort of scenery where you see the building crumbling down from a shot from a rocket launcher. Also like World at War we see a flamethrower, yeah boy! I can't wait to use this, it looks really good so that's another confirmed weapon. But there's more talking between friends and another point is you see the different regiments on their badge like you would in real life, like you can see there he's Prestige 7, I <laughs> don't get it, he's level 17. But imagine that being a function in the actual multiplayer. That would be fantastic if you actually wore it on your arm. That would be great. But of course you see in praying here you can really feel that there's going to be emotion during the campaign between the conflict of players. You can see he punches him in the face, more explosions and they've really, re they've really kept a lot of their secrets hidden for this trailer. But there are still little bits that tell us a lot about this besides that MG42 and of course he's got the M1 Grand again and this is the part where I talked about with the buildings crumbling down after being shot so I've got my fingers crossed this mechanic's gonna be in the multiplayer but we see here from the first person perspective we're either beating down a, a Nazi elite member or we're doing it to a teammate so the conflict's really high but we're seeing some real close combat which could be fantastic Fantastic from a first person point of view. Now there isn't too much actually shown to us in this scene right here but it is it is quite pretty cool it's really cool we see the first person perspective of the soldier which they always give us a little teaser of. More tank conflict which confirms the, uh, the vehicle me uh, mechanisms being in multiplayer and yeah just it seems like a really engaging story that they're going to add this time so I'm, I'm actually looking forward to playing the multiplayer more of the more more of the vehicles shooting or the tank and yeah just some really awesome shots in that scene here we see more scenery of the 45 caliber green scope i believe it is or seagate but yeah, we see another bit of gameplay here and the next scene we see a better close up of the weapon itself. And you can see him carrying it ready to mess shit up. But ladies and gentlemen, I promise you I've looked deep into the depths and that's all the information we have at this current moment in time. I will keep you all updated. I'll be doing videos and live streams when it comes out. So if you want to subscribe, that would be fantastic. But thank you all so much for watching. It has been your boy da -da 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 DJ Lordsy. Make sure to subscribe, like and leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. A peace. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention I'm going to be live streaming this game when it comes out. I'm going to be potentially doing a giveaway and I'm making another couple of videos. One on the multiplayer, what we know so far, and another one on zombies, what we know so far. So thank you all for watching once again. It's been your boy DJ. New clan video coming soon. Peace out.